Hey there, welcome to day 1579 of What's She Up To Now? Sharon Hornell's from here, holding up some creatures. Uh, shortages of creature comfort or comforts. Are you experiencing that? We talk about shortages, lack, scarcity for the BU 365 Day Challenge. And I may have pontificated a little bit about shortages, real shortages of, you know, they say in real estate, one of the biggest sayings is, there's a shortage of land. They're not making any more of it. So you better get in now and buy, right? Well, I don't think anybody's run out of land yet in terms of buying and selling and changing hands, right? Trillions of dollars have been transacted on this on land, right? And a lot of it's the same land selling over and over and over and over again. So is there really a shortage of land or is that an artificially marketing marketer created scarcity, right? Or is, is land really scarce? So far, I, I would argue with that one. Time, I would say time is definitely a limited, scarce resource. And depending on what you want to do with your time, you can consider it scarce or it's definitely a limited. But the thing is, we don't know what the limit is on our personal time. And so I think time is one that we can feel like we're running out of time and that it's scarce or or lacking for us when it comes to, and, and I think it's more a priority setting thing than it is a time. I, there was a quote yesterday on LinkedIn and I'm like, I commented, well, it's not really that we don't have enough time. It's how we're prioritizing and using our time that matters. Because if we're using our time and setting our based on our priorities and moving us toward the things that we want and our goals and objectives, then we all have the same 24 hours in a day. It's how we use it, how we choose and decide and take action on using that time, right? If we spend six hours in front of the television set vegetating or God forbid an hour or more in front of the news, we're probably wasting our time and our time could be better spent on things that really move our life in the direction we want to go versus creating fear, doubt, worry, scarcity, anger in us. Do we really need more of those emotions? I would I would beg to differ and say, uh, no. Anything that makes us feel bad, we should turn off and run away from as quickly as possible. So uh, talking about shortages, lack, scarcity, and of course, got on the, the baby formula. And, and what better way to in, inject fear into the population than let mothers think that they're not going to have enough food to feed their babies or make it hard for them to get the formula that they need to feed their babies. Uh, I think that that is, uh, I personally think that that's criminal to to allow a shortage like that to happen when you know that it's it's unnecessary, right? So uh, we talked about that. We're just sharing one thing that we have experienced in our lifetime that is an actual shortage or lack or something we couldn't get. And, and I didn't think of it till I turned off the camera, but my fingernails were sacrificed during COVID of all the things that I couldn't figure out a way. And I tried. I used the dog grinder, the dog nail grinder on my nails and tried to do that. But I still ended up sacrificing my fingernails during COVID. And that that seems like such a such a first world problem, right? I mean, how ridiculous is that? But when you're legally blind, uh, it's physically challenging to do things like your own fingernails. So uh, <clears throat> that was a, a creature comfort, which is our topic for Supersize Your Business today. Uh, that is a creature comfort that I ended up actually, and it's definitely a, a extra comfort thing, right? It, nobody has to get their fingernails done. It's a luxury that, I, you know, I never even afforded myself. All the time I was in corporate America, every Sunday night, I would sit with my kids, much to their dismay, and we would watch Xena Warrior Princess and the the X Files, and and they they hated the X Files. Although my my daughter is really into aliens now, she and her ex or she and her ex, she and her husband love to watch alien documentaries and alien shows and things. I think it's fascinating. So I would do my nails every Sunday night. And I if, if I found out that I could go get my nails done with a lot less time and energy than doing it myself. And that's when I finally went and started getting my nails done. But it's not even like that's been something I've done the majority of my life. So, uh, but that was a thing I found that I've really had a lack or a shortage of. And there's things that we can do in our life to make sure that the things that are really important to us are available when we need them. Now, if other parties are creating <clears throat> shortages of things we're used to always having on purpose, which I believe there's probably some nefarious things that went down with the COVID pandemic that caused 
there to be shortages of things that normally would not even have been a shortage or necessary. Think toilet paper, hand sanitizer, face masks, all of those things. So I'm not talking about when, and I would contend that the vast majority of shortages we experience these days are intentional, not in, in necessarily a nefarious way, but in a way to generate interest, generate and create demand so that the price of them will go up, right? Especially when it comes to commodities and things that we've never had shortages of before. So again, that's, that's a whole topic, but we want to think about what are some of the things that we can do to have creative alternatives to things that we're having a hard time getting. If we believe and we know that there's always a solution to every problem, every situation, and we know that and believe that in ourselves, we really don't experience shortages and lacks of things very often, right? And so we don't feel like there's a scarce amount of resources. We don't feel like there's a scarcity of things. Now, again, when things are artificially created to increase fear, doubt, worry, anxiety, and depression, and, and to control people, think gas prices and inflation. As much as we don't want to admit it, that is all being done intentionally to control us, right? I'm part of the masses to control all of us. And uh, I, I'm not even going to go into that because it doesn't have anything to do with growing and supersizing and building my businesses. Does it mean some of my costs and expenses when it's an inflationary time are going up? Yes. Will I let it shut me down? Nope. There's always a solution. We'll always figure out a way to make whatever we want to have happen, happen. If we believe and have that mindset. So creature comforts was our idiom for supersize your business today. And I talked about customer experience employee experience, company culture, uh, and, and what all those things mean to us. So I, I never really, I've never really thought of as a specific segment, the creature comforts of the organization as a separate thing, but I might create it like an audit checklist for that. Cause I think it could be really valuable because it's one of those things we want to have in our company. We want to maintain the culture. We want to have a healthy culture, but as we grow and build and supersize, so often it gets chipped away at. It's like our our belief in ourselves and our self-esteem and our confidence and our ego. Sometimes the world around us just chip, 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 chips away at us. And we don't realize the impact it's having until there's a, a an event or a situation that really brings it to our conscious. And so it's the same thing with our our culture and and we want to make sure that our confidence and our culture is always being maintained and doing what's right for us and things that make us feel good, not that make us feel bad or doubtful or worried or scared or that there's scarcity or lack. Uh, Saturday here in my neck of the woods and the, the family, the people I'm usually hanging around the most are up north with the other grandparents. So I am having a weekend of creativity and fun and excitement. Uh, all to myself and I'm super excited about it. All right, if I can help you anyway, that means that five minute thing that I like to say, I'm here, I'm an available if you need five minutes to get focused on what you need to do next. Otherwise, I'm going to enjoy my time, probably in nature if it stops raining. Otherwise, maybe I'll grab out the umbrella and the raincoat and go for a walk in the rain. That's always fun too. All right, let me know if I can help you anyway. Otherwise, I will be with you tomorrow just to fill you in on What's working, what's not working as I transitioned from brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business and back and forth again. All right. Have a great day.